Um, could, could you just kind of say a little something about each of your seniors playing their last home game this week? Well, the three seniors in the program that are still playing, Faze Layden obviously is, is out, <clears throat> and uh, but he gave us a lot during the time he was on the floor, uh, a prolific scorer. He came into the program, played behind Clay Thompson, um, or else he would have had even better numbers in regards to scoring the last couple of years. Charlie Enquist, Abe Lodwick, two fifth-year seniors, uh, have been <clears throat> exactly what any coach would want from a player. Uh, you know, they're a, the epitome of a student athlete, which, like I said, we all want, we all need. Those two kids are, are great kids, are great students, and they've they've contributed a tremendous amount on the basketball court. Then the the last senior is Marcus Capers. He's played a lot of minutes in his four years here, and especially the last three uh, during my time, and has been a huge asset to the team. He's been a really good defender, uh, a solid offensive player. Uh, put down a lot of big time highlight dunks to get our team going and sometimes the crowd going on our home court. But I think what's most special about Marcus is just who he is as a person. Uh, just a, a great young man and someone that we are proud of to, uh, to be a Coug. Uh, rare to find a, a guard his size at this level who really prides himself on defense. And rebounding. Yeah. I mean, I think I don't know if it was last game or the game before he had seven rebounds. Um, in fact, in the last game, maybe he had yeah. nine. Yeah. Nine or ten. Yeah. You know, he's just uh, – he, he's really done a good job of finding what he can do to contribute to the team without being that, that shooting guard. And sometimes we've asked him to be the point guard like a year ago when Reggie was out the first six, eight games of the season. He did a, a, a really good job in that during that time. And even this year, playing a number of minutes at the point position. Uh, and sometimes he's our off guard. Sometimes he's our three man. There's been times he's been our four guy. When there's a, a coaching transition, is, is there? Do you need guys like Charlie and like Abe? To oh get yeah, the yeah. Just solid, solid people. Guys that you can trust. Um, that they're doing the right things on and off the court. And they're representing the program uh, in a positive manner. Uh, Coach Romar said yesterday, compared not necessarily their, their <coughs> games, but compared Brock Moden to Clay Thompson for you guys, and just in what he brings and and how much he's relied on and what he can do to have a stretch of games. I mean, did, are you starting to see that? Well, I'm sure what Coach Romar is alluding to is the fact that Brock can score. You know, he, he plays a different role, but he can score a variety of ways. You have to respect the fact that he can post up. He has a good mid-range game, and, and yet he can also step out, shoot the three. And uh, if he's guarded tightly, he can, he can drive it and get to the rim. So he's, like Clay, he's a multi-dimensional scorer, but does it from a different position. Obviously, in your guys' first matchup against them, the rebounding was, was the big issue. Uh, can, you, can you attack it the same way and just expect better execution this time, or do you think that a, a different approach is needed to keep them off the glass? Well, I think our approach was, was right. I mean, our guys really tried. Uh, they tried to keep the Huskies off the glass. But Washington was very physical, strong, relentless, that last, uh, especially the last half, and, and had their way with us. Can, uh, how well you guys do in the glass this time around kind of serve as another kind of litmus test of how much you progressed from that point? I don't know. You know, I think it's, it's just they're a unique team, the way they, the way they rebound. You know, a number of times in the last seven, eight years, they've led the conference in, in rebounding, especially offensive rebounding. And I'm pretty sure they're leading the conference again this year in offensive rebounding. 
it's it's a big part of their of their offense. I mean, Tony Roten is one of the best I've ever seen at shooting a shot, and then if it's missed, he gets his own rebound. A lot of times, it ends up being an and one. You know, he's a he's a six five future NBA guy. It's it's hard to stop that. Arizona's players said it seemed like he was almost trying to miss his first attempt so he could get more rebounds. And does it seem that way at times, even if that's not the case? Yeah, yeah. When it happens, it seems that way. But you know, he's you know he's trying to score it because he's good at that also. But when he does miss it, you almost think, "Wow, was he really trying to miss it?" Because he's so his instincts and his quickness are so good that he reacts quicker than most guys. And. Uh, makes great plays out of missed shots. You uh, happy to see that the students were able to get their camp out thing done this week and got that approved? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's neat. It's something that uh, the students are excited about and they, they want to have a fun time with the, with the Husky game. So I think it's neat that they're getting, getting that opportunity. Are you going to have to wait till the end of the week on Mike Ladd for him to clear tests? Or? Yeah, I, we, yes, we're not sure where he'll be at the end of the week. He'll continue to be tested every day right up till Friday. Okay. He, he can't do anything in practice right now until he's clear. I think today he can just shoot like free throws. Okay, before we take questions on the phone, can I ask that um, if you have the ability to please mute your phone, there's some um, wind noise and stuff going on, so if you're not asking the question, if you can mute, that'd be great. Um, and now we'll take questions from the phone. Hey, you guys, uh, sometimes coaches and players get involved when there's a, you know, like a, you know, a tent city situation like Saturday or Friday night, you got to do anything? Well, I've not given it any thought yet. I just got off the road from recruiting last night about midnight and found out that they're doing this camp out deal early this morning. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll get involved in some way to show our appreciation, but I'm not sure exactly what we will do yet. Uh, to clarify, if you need some information, uh, at least five of the teams will be by while people are camping out, um, most likely the basketball team as well. So on Friday, you'll see volleyball, um, soccer, and rowing, and then on Saturday, football and baseball will be by. 